Alright, how's everybody doing this evening? Back again with another video for you guys and gals. And tonight what I have for everyone is my versus slash comparison video between three apps for the Essential Phone PH1. And in particular, what we're going to take a look at tonight is three different camera apps. Okay? So we're going to look at these in depth. And I'm going to go over some of the features that I like between all these cameras. And at the end, we're going to go over which one I would recommend the most and why. And then at the very end of the video, I'm going to have a, a photo slideshow followed by some video samples of the front and the rear using all three camera apps so you guys and gals can see the differences. Now... Let's jump right into this. Starting off, let's talk about the stock camera app. Now, as I said in the review, the stock camera app is very nice. It's very simple and clean and straightforward. Everything is laid out very neatly. You got your quick settings across the top. So again, you have your settings, which just lets you um, control the, uh, the grids here and your storage location and your shutter sound and you got your flash controls so on off auto so on and so off your HDR controls off on auto your resolution controls so you can see right now set to 1080p 60 tap it goes to 4k tap it again 720p 30 that's what that HD stands for then you got your timer controls, 2 seconds, 10 seconds, off, switch to the front facing camera here, ba bam switch back, tap it again, now video recorder, you tap that, you go straight into recording video, shutter button, shortcut to your gallery, auto mode, which is what it comes on at the box, portrait mode, mono mode and slow mode alright now that pretty much covers everything the stock camera app can do in all the modes so as I said some, some of the things that I like about the stock camera app is very simple it's very straightforward and the learning curve for it is not too much now some of the, some of the downsides about the stock camera app all those stuff reference to things it doesn't clearly tell you what things are and I can't go into the settings in the stock camera app and change my resolutions of the camera so in particular I can't switch it to uh, 16 by 9 aspect ratio so on and so forth I can't see what the actual resolutions of the videos are all I get is that little shortcut toggle across the top, so on and so forth. So it does have its advantages because it lets you take true advantage of both 13 megapixel cameras on the rear, whether you want to shoot portrait, mono, or slow mode, but it does have its disadvantages as well. Uh, and overall, I have to say, when it comes to the photos, it does... Uh, again t have the ability to take great photos with the proper light and it does have the ability to take uh, great videos with the proper light but in my experience these uh, photos and videos tend to come out a little dark still good but a little dark now let's move on up next I want to talk about one of my go-to camera apps which is the open camera app Okay, and in particular with the open camera app, you get a bunch of features here. Okay, you get your again your stock stuff. So you have your video button there. You tap that, you go straight into video. You tap over, and you go straight into photo. Sorry, I didn't mean to take that video there. You tap over, you go straight into photo. All right, you tap here. You switch between the front and the rear facing cameras so on and so forth you got your zoom slider control 
which you can adjust in the settings. I'm going to show you that in a minute. You have your quick settings toggle right here. So you can jump in and adjust stuff. Got somebody going live here. Really good stuff there. Masterpiece Gaming going live. Going to check that out a little bit later. But you got your quick setting controls here. So you can control the resolutions at which the camera can truly shoot at. So right here you can see I have it set to... Um, 1920 by 1080 but since this is a photo it can go all the way up to 4160 by 3120 okay and it can all go all the way down to see what that bottom is go all the way down to 144 by 176 okay so you can truly take full advantage of the camera and shoot photos and videos in any resolution that the camera supports okay and it will tell you in the app if you're trying to shoot in something that the camera doesn't support it will tell you not supported at which point you can go ahead and um, switch to you get one that is supported but you, you see, with the Essential Phone, you do have the ability to shoot in all of those resolutions. And then right here, you have your timer controls, you got your burst mode controls, your grid controls, you got your white balance, your scene mode. So you can adjust this, you can shoot in portrait mode, sport mode, steady photo mode, all that good stuff is here. In particular, I like to use portrait mode and auto mode, okay? And then across the top here, you have all of your focusing modes and controls for your flash, okay? So this is what I like to leave it on, continuous autofocus. I think I turned it off because it was already on. Yeah, it's already on. But that's what I like to leave it on. Out of the box, it comes set to auto. And you can see when you set it, it actually tells you auto. So this is a really nice in-depth camera and we're going to switch it back to continuous auto for the pictures and you can do the same thing for the video so if I tap over here and we go into the quick setting mode you can adjust all that stuff for the videos and again adjusting this has to do with the resolution of the video which is really nice then you have your flash controls again so you can leave your flash on during video and you have your auto auto focus mode and you can lock focus so on and so forth really nice stuff there now what you can do with the open camera as well is you could dive further into the settings at which point you get more controls so you got timer controls burst mode controls burst mode intervals more um, camera controls so you can go in here and tweak all this stuff you can do voice shutter you can do tap to capture so on and so forth and here you can even control where you store your uh, photos and videos which is really nice really nice stuff okay and if we back up here and go into video you can see we can change all types of resolutions so this is all of the resolutions and megapixels for the supported camera so you can see we got 4k 30 frames per second and we can go all the way down and all the intervals in between all the way down to um, 160 by 120 at 4 by 3 aspect ratio and every stop in between right so that's really really nice so if I want to shoot in full HD you could do that there if I want to shoot in 1440 by 1080 which is a little bit higher than regular HD I could do that there so on and so forth 720p right here so on and so forth so this is one of the reasons why I really really like the open camera app because I can truly see what's all supported by any camera that this app is on and I can adjust it accordingly one of the other neat features about the open camera app is you can adjust the shooting um, um, timer limitations. 
Now you guys know when I say that I mean you can adjust the time for the videos. Okay? So in particular, I can have an hour long 4K video. But it's not really an hour long. What it does is it splits that 4K video into two 31 um, minute and change segments. So at which point I could either choose to stitch it back together or release it in two parts. So on and so forth. Okay? And you can also control whether you want the uh, the video to start right, uh, restart when it reaches the limit right away or don't restart. Okay? And you can control how many times it does that. Alright? And you can control the um, maximum file size for your video. So I just leave that default. So you can you can really fine tune um, how much storage your videos and photos take up, and the overall um, um, time that you can shoot your videos. I'm at a loss for words tonight. And as you can see, if you jump back here, if you go into photo mode, you can add all types of stuff here. So you could add um, your stamps. So you can write in a stamp here. Which is really nice, which you're going to see later. That's how I differentiate between the photos. Okay, the photos and the app. That's how I differentiate between that, using that stamp there, which is really nice. You can go in, you can add timestamps. It's a little cold. I have the sniffles, I apologize. You can go in, you can add timestamps, um, um, location stamps so on and so forth you can change your font you can change your font size font color so on and so forth all right there and again you can control the resolution at which you take your photos so really nice stuff there okay really good stuff and there's a lot more to this but that's mainly a lot of the stuff that I deal with when I come in here and this is one of my go-to camera apps okay in particular, y'all can see how I have it set on this right there. So I have the photo set to uh, 1920 by 1080. And I have the HDR on with the autofocus and the timestamp and this in portrait mode. That's what that little guy, the little person head in the corner means. That means it's in portrait mode. And you can see if I jump over the video, it's at 1080p, 30 frames, and I got it set for an hour. And what's really nice about the video is that it tells you how much uh, space per second it takes up. So this one is 20 megabits per second of video recording. So that's really, really nice. And this is a really, really nice, solid go-to camera app. And you can really, really tweak this to your heart's content, so on and so forth. So that is the open camera app, one of my favorite camera apps to use. Now, I'm going to move on to probably one of my next favorite camera apps to use. This is the Google Camera App APK, or the same camera app that you would use on your Google Pixels. Alright, and again, what I like about this one is, again, similar to the Essential Phone. It's very clean and straightforward, but unlike the Essential Phone, it goes a little bit more in-depth. Okay, so similarly to the essential phone, you got your nice and neat layout across the top. So you got your timer controls, you got your HDR controls, and in particular with the Google Camera App APK, you have the ability to use um, HDR Plus, which really lets you dial out, dial in the video and get every ounce of brightness or light out of the video, which I'm sure y'all will have noticed. If you checked out some of my recent videos, which were mostly done using the Google Camera app here. So that's really, really nice. And HDR Plus is really, really solid. Then we got our grid line controls. Then we got our scene controls here. So on and so forth. Got our flash controls there. And then you got your mode controls. So we got slow motion. We got panorama. We got photo spare, which is really nice. We got lens blur, which is like a bokeh mode. And then we got our settings. Right? Down across the bottom, we got our shutter button. We got our video mode. And what's nice about this 
is when you tap it, it doesn't automatically go into video mode. So you can really get ready before you record video. And the same thing with the photos. So when you tap it, it doesn't automatically take a photo, but you can take a photo while in video. Then you got your uh, camera switch here, and it's pretty much the same for the front. Okay? Now, what I like about the um, Google Camera App APK in particular is that when you dive into the settings here, you got all types of neat controls. So you can control your shutter sound, you can control your storage location, you can control what your volume keys do. So you can see I have it set up to take a picture when I when I touch either of the volume buttons. And this is what I'm talking about right here. You can also control the um, resolution of your photos right here. So this is how I know what the true resolution of the um, Essential Phones PH1 camera is. So you can see it really is a 13 megapixel camera, but to take advantage of all 13 megapixels, you're going to have to shoot in that 4x3 aspect ratio. If you want to shoot in the 16x9 cinematic mode, you're going to have to bump it down to 8.3 megapixels, which is really nice, and sometimes I don't mind the megapixel hit. So that's really nice to see. And you can do the same thing for the front camera as well, so you can see to take advantage of all um, 8.3 megapixels, this one's really nice. You're actually shooting in the 16 by 9 aspect ratio. Okay? And as you work your way down, it changes accordingly. So you can see right now I have it set on 5 megapixels in 4x3. But I really do like the fact that when you shoot the front facing camera, the default here is 16 by 9 and you get to use all 8.3 megapixels right and you got your burst mode settings here so on and so forth then you got your panorama resolutions then down here you got your video resolutions and you do see that it does have software stabilization that's what this video stabilization button is so that's really really nice and you can see I have everything set to 1080p now, what I don't like about this resolution controller here is that it doesn't tell you the frames per second. I actually had to look it up. The only one that it tells you the frames per second for is the 4K, which is at 30 frames per second. But I do know that this is at 1080p 60 and that's 720p 30. So that further confirms all the stuff that I had to look up using the stock camera app. And for the purpose of this video and photos, I left everything set to 1080p. Alright? So in particular, um, going back into the app here, a lot of stuff I like about this stock Google Camera APK app is it's simple and straightforward, but it does give you in-depth information about the cameras. And you do have a lot of fun functional modes. And in particular, what I like about this is when you shoot with this camera, you do have the ability to get some really nice photos and some really nice video. And if you're shooting with a darker camera, it will pull out that light and make things seem brighter. Alright? So now, that pretty much does it for covering the camera apps. Now I'm just going to tell you guys which ones I prefer. Okay? Now, it really comes down to using all three, okay? Because with the stock camera app, then I could take advantage of the second sensor, which is the monochrome sensor, and get some really nice um, black and white photos. Other than that, I probably wouldn't use the stock camera app. I'll either use the open camera app, which lets me fine tune my videos and photos, and set limit restrictions for that and another neat thing that I like about the open camera app is once you set it you can close the app and come back into it and it, your settings remain alright one thing that I dislike about the other two camera apps is that you can set your stuff and then when you come back in it it resets everything so for instance if I was shooting an HDR video or an HDR photo and I exited the app after doing such, 
when I come back in, everything's reset and I have to remember to set it how I want it again. And that's that's for the stock app here and for the Google camera app right here. Whereas when I'm in the open camera app and I close it and come back, it keeps my settings. So you can see right there, my settings are still kept. So that's another reason why the open camera app is one of my go-to apps. So if I had to rank these camera apps, I would say the open camera app is ranked at number one, followed by the Google camera app, followed by the stock app, okay? That's how I would rank it. So if I could, I would probably get rid of the stock app if there was a way to implement the usage of the monochrome camera with the other two camera apps, then I wouldn't really have a need for the stock camera app. But because I can't do that, I'm stuck using the stock camera app when I want to take those crispy black and white photos. But that pretty much does it for the camera app comparison portion. Now I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this portion of the video here. And I'm going to drop in again the photo samples for you guys to check out and the video samples for you guys to check out. So enjoy and I'll catch you in the next video. Peace everyone. Alright, so, as I said before in the camera video, this is a camera test at 1080p using the open camera camera app with HDR on and continu continuous autofocus on. And this one is set to uh, portrait mode because I am shooting this portrait, not landscape. And all of the videos will be done in portrait, not landscape. So again, this is number one. This is, again, the open camera app at 1080p. All right, let's move to the next one. All right, so now we back in. This is with the Google Pixel camera app. This one is using HDR plus, same settings. Now there was no particular uh, portrait setting on this. There was only a blur mode for the photos. So there's no portrait mode setting in this one. But this one is again at 1080p and it's front facing camera. I don't think I said that in the first one, but this is the front facing 8 megapixel camera. All right, so yep. Let's move on to the next one. Okay, and this one is the same style. This is using the stock essential phone camera app. This time we have to take a bump down in resolution because with the stock essential phone camera app, it only lets you do 720p and 4K with the front facing camera. But here we go, same settings. So you guys let me know what you think of this one. And now let's move on to the next one. All right. All right, how's everybody doing today? As you 
again with another video for you guys and gals. And today, I just have this real quick camera sample test. This one is for my camera app comparison video. This one, we're using the Manfrotto tripod with the Lamku universal mount. And we're shooting this video with the Google Camera APK or the Google Pixel APK. And this is on the Essential Phone PH1. So I'm not really going to make this video any longer than this. This is just to see how the video quality looks. And this video is shot at 1080p at 60 frames a second. Alright, let's go ahead and switch apps now. Alright, how's everybody doing today? Back again with another video for you guys. And in particular, what this video is, is this is a real quick camera samples test of the Essential Phone PH1. This one is going to go into my camera comparison video or my camera app comparison video. So this one is using the stock Essential Phone camera app and the video is being recorded at 1080p, 60 frames per second. All right, we're not gonna make this video any longer than that, and we're gonna go ahead and cut to the next one. Go get them. All right, and the last one, this one is using the open camera, camera app. Again, we're using the uh, central phone PH1, and this video is being recorded at 1080p 60. And we're using the Manfrotto mini tripod with the LAM2 universal smartphone mount. So real quickly, not going to make this video too long. And yeah, let's just wrap this up here. Okay, hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.